Let's look at the summer patterns from Simplicity. Hi, I'm Tiffany of Tip Stitch and welcome back to my YouTube channel where we discuss all things sewing and DIY. In this video, we are gonna take a look at all of the summer patterns for 2024 released by Simplicity. I'm gonna share my thoughts and feelings about some of these patterns and I hope that you will do the same in the comments. Without further ado, let's jump right in. The first two patterns in this summer release from Simplicity are Mimi G patterns and I typically love Mimi G patterns and these are going to be no exception. I actually want to start with the photos here first. So we have the envelope, the front envelope, and you can see that you are going to have a dress and a jumpsuit option. That is something that I love in patterns because y'all know I love a one piece. Here we can see that the dress is going to have this deep V, these side cutouts that wrap around to the back, and it's going to have a very fitted straight skirt. Conversely, view B gives you the same deep V neckline, but you're going to have these full uh, pants. And so I like that for a jumpsuit pattern. But let's fast forward to what the back view is going to be. You are going to have a lot of back coverage. I mean, a lot of back not covered <laughs> in this pattern, but it's super cute with button closures. You can see here that you're going to have buttons on the back bodice and a side zip for the skirt or the pants. This is just a very nice pattern. If you take a look at the details here, it lets you know that you can do this in a crepe, a denim, a linen, a ponte, a sateen. I would love to do this in like a ponte because I like a little bit of stretch. A denim with a little bit of stretch, stretch crepe. Um, you wouldn't want something that has a lot of stretch. You want something that's very stable, but I always like a little extra comfort. So I would probably go with the stretch for this. Um, you do have sizes eight to 16 and then size 18 to 26. So you have a pretty good coverage range on this. And let's look at the line drawings because I just always like to. You can see that you have sort of like a princess seam bodice that goes into the skirts or the pants. So it's gonna be very fitted at the waist. Um, the skirt's gonna be straight and then the pants are going to flare out to more of a wide leg. But I think both of these are very cute. I just don't know that I need any more patterns with the back out right now. So I'm probably gonna pass, but I cannot wait to see some amazing versions of these. I could see this on Denisha or Classified Life. I could see this on Erica Bunker. Very cute, um, So Hot Mommy. There's so many design, uh, other sewists that I think we're gonna make this and it's gonna be super cute. I'm just gonna pass on it this time. The second Mimi G pattern in this release is 9946 and this is a dress. This is gonna give you two views of a dress and let's look at the line drawings first for this one because I want you to see the differences in the two. Of course, you can see one is short, one is long, but view A also has a deep V neckline with a crisscross back, whereas view B has a scoop neckline and a more covered back, although both do have um, the side seam pockets as well as the cute little peekaboo in the front and a little bit of like a gathering at the under the midriff at the waist. But if you look at the pictures here, you might be able to see the difference a little bit better. The shorter view was gonna have this like deeper V and then we can fast forward here to see that it's gonna have the crisscross strap. So you're gonna have decent amount of back coverage here, but you, more of your back will be out versus view B that has more of a scoop neckline uh, covering a little bit more of the décolletage um, and still have the peekaboo while having more coverage. Oh, they don't show the back, but you're going to have more coverage in the back in view B. So I think both of these um, are really cute views. They just have different purposes. And I like that though they're very, I mean, they're the same dress, right? Because they're in the same pattern, but I feel like you get two different looks in this dress, something that could fit most people um this one comes in the same i believe 8 to 16 and then 18 to 26. this i could definitely see in a linen or a chambray or maybe a lawn i i, I would think a lighter weight fabric here so you could have the drapey and the flow a crepe would work something like that i definitely like this one and i plan on grabbing it 9947 has a sister pattern 9948, which means that this one is truly size inclusive. You're gonna have from a size four to 12, then a 12 to 20, as well as a 20 to 28W and 30 to 38W for the 9948. I like when they do this because I think that it's important to have more size inclusivity. So I think that that is great. 
Um, the sad thing is I don't really love this pattern. Now, before you don't get it twisted, I don't think there's anything wrong with this pattern because I love a knit dress. I love a pullover dress for summer. It's cute, but I don't understand the wrap, which really sort of sucks because I love a knit dress and I love a wrap dress, but I don't really get how these panels pull forward. You can see here on this shorter version how there's this two wrap pieces that you can tie in the front. I feel like I either want them to wrap over each other or I want there to be a little bit more coverage in the skirt area. I don't know. It just seems like it weighs it down in the front. It doesn't quite look on the body the way that they have it in the illustrations that you can see here. But I mean, it's cute. You can pull it on, throw on some sandals, throw on some accessories and be done. And that's what I love about the summer in one pieces. So on the line drawing here, you can see that you have two lengths and two sleeve options. And then you have these side, you know, wrap pieces that you can bring to the front. It's just not a pattern that I would see myself sewing, but it's an easy to sew quick pattern. Um, it would probably be good to have in your, you know, collection if you like this style of dress. This I would want to use a lighter weight jersey for because I don't want that wrap piece to like weigh it down as much. So I'm thinking a light polyester, sort of ITY or a lightweight jersey. I wouldn't want to do this in maybe not a double brush poly, definitely not a Ponte or a Liverpool. You want to keep to the lighter knits with this one. Simplicity 9949 is cute. I like it because I typically like a halter dress. I like how it has the square neck line um, with this halter and of course that it has different lengths. So you can see here on the uh, model that you're going to have like this square neckline with this thick halter strap. Now what I really like about this particular version is I am a sucker for a denim dress so like what the model is wearing is just super cute. Here you see that you have a really big hem band um, that's going to add a little bit more drama to the bottom and we will look at the line drawing so we can see your different options for length and such. So here you can see that view a is a little bit shorter than view B, although the way that they have the model side by side is sort of hard to see, but you can see on the back view. This also has side seams pockets. I like that the back comes up a little bit high, even though it's a halter. The only thing that I might would change is here you have two buttons to close the halter strap and I would prefer ties because I just like to have control over that adjustment. But that's a modification that you can make really simply to the pattern. Uh, as much as I like this dress, I'm probably going to pass because I feel like I have a lot of dresses right now and this one doesn't stand out that much to me. Um, it does come in a 6 to 14 and then a 16 to 24 and I could see you making this out of almost any woven fabric. You can see here they have it in denim, linen would work, seersucker, cotton, um, you know, basically <laughs> broccoli, like any woven would pretty much work for this and I think it would be a cute addition for summer. It's just not a dress that I'm looking for right now. Simplicity 9950 is an interesting one to me. I don't know if I like it or not. I just don't 100% get it. And let's look at the line drawing for this one first. You'll see that view A has an off the shoulder option with this deep scoop with a tie and then spaghetti straps. Um, and then view B is essentially the same, but longer with longer sleeves. I definitely don't get the long sleeve version. I would say that my favorite view would be view C, which has the double skinny straps. Um, and then I think that's the longer skirt again there. Let's look at it on the model, although we're not gonna see all views. We're just gonna see view B here. And there's just something about the off the shoulder with the tie with the spaghetti straps that feels like there's just a lot going on on the bodice and not necessarily in a good way. But those are just my thoughts. They do have a princess seam in the bodice, so I'm sure it's going to give you a really nice fit. I do like the fact that you have different lengths here. But like I said, this view C with the double strap, I think I like better than the other views. Um... I don't know that I'm getting the tie across the front and the back, the horizontal tie. I think maybe that's what's throwing me off. I'm actually not sure. But this one does come from a size 8 to 16 and then 18 to 26. So you have pretty good coverage there. They recommend a poplin, a chambray, a lawn or a gauze. Again, I would think something that is a little bit more lightweight. Um, it doesn't look bad on the model. I just think this isn't my style. So let me know what y'all think about this one. 
All right, we are moving on to a few tops here and we are going to start with um, 9951. Uh, this is a really simple top. It sort of reminds me of a beach cover up. I'm sure I've seen this in another pattern somewhere. Um, you just have a deep V for the front, a deep V for the back, um, and a little peplum sort of gathered at the bottom with these like wide dome and sleeves. Here they have it, you know, sort of trimmed out with some lace. You could use whatever trim you want. You could do it without the trim. Um, there's options here. You could use almost any kind of fabric like a gauze or a seersucker or a linen or a cotton or a chambray. There's just so many options that you can do here. And then you could add the trim like the model has here. It has the cute ties in the back that could even be trim. Um, it doesn't require a lot, but I just don't think that this pattern really stands out in any way. You could also probably self draft this really simply, but you know, for those of us who don't want to put in the effort to do that and just want to spend the $199, $299 on the pattern, this would be the way to go. This one is also size inclusive from an 8 to a 16 and then an 18 to a 26. I almost feel like this could be a small, medium, large pattern. I don't really feel like it's that fitted. I don't know why they have that many sizes. It doesn't seem necessary. Um, but again, I feel like I've seen this as a new look pattern and maybe another simplicity pattern where if the peplum or the bottom was just extended a bit more, it's basically just a swimsuit cover up. So you could do it in like an eyelet or a mesh or something. Um, again, don't hate it. Just don't love it. Not for me. Another not for me top is 9952. This one is just really not for me. It is a blouse. Let's look at the line drawing first here. It's an oversized boxy blouse. You can see that there are sort of three options here as far as the views. View A has just like a drop shoulder dome and sleeve with a collar and a button up. View B is essentially the same, but it adds an extra bit of sleeve with a fold up option with a tab to secure it, which is a kind of sleeve I really typically like. I like the fold up with the tab with the button, um, but this is just too oversized and boxy for me. And then view C is almost the same as view B, except for it lacks the actual collar. You just have the stand here. So, I mean, if this is your style, this more oversized uh, boxy look, I think that this would be perfect. It's just not something uh, that I would wear. You can see it here on the model, it just has that sort of oversized feeling. It looks like that's probably a linen. It would probably look nice in the crisp white like they have there. Um, it just sort of really reminds me of an artist's smock, especially this floral version that we just looked at. It just seems like something that an artist or a sculptor would have on in their art studio. Um, it's pretty basic, but you know, if you like that, then I think that would work. Now this one does come in small, medium, large. It actually goes up to an extra, extra large and all the sizes are in one pattern envelope. So I guess at least you'd have everything covered if you grab this one. Um, and again, this is a pattern that you could use almost any woven fabric for. So I guess you could always use this for a fabric that you really want to stand out because you love the pattern, maybe something that's at a larger scale and you don't want to have a whole lot of seam lines breaking up. This would be something that could work for that. 9953 is another top, but totally different, right? This is going to be more of a flirty, girly, feminine top. You can see on the line drawings that you have three options, although they're very similar. View A is going to have like an attest as last to size like top bodice with wider straps and ruffle sleeves which i actually think are pretty cute and then uh, view b is going to be similar but with thinner adjustable spaghetti strap instead of the thicker wider straps and then view c is essentially the same thing just shorter and trimmed with um, some lace trim so let's look at it on the envelope you can see that here are your three views uh, view A and B look like they're about the same length. View C is going to be shorter. They feature this in more like specialty cotton fabric. So you can see that this is like a border eyelet cotton here. Uh, this one looks like it could be out of like a linen or a chambray or a chalet or something like that. Just something with the print, maybe even cotton lawn. And then this one is going to be that bordered eyelet. And then view C is going to be just like a cotton but with a lace trim at the bottom. So those are sort of your options there. It's just not a style of shirt that I would wear, but I could definitely see it on people great for summer on a hot summer day. 
this would be great. It goes from a four to a 12 and then a 14 to a 22. This is actually very loose and the top's gonna be elasticized. So you could probably push that a little bit further than a 22, depending on your chest size. But this one is one that's a really simple top, but good for summer. Simplicity 9954 sort of reminds me of the 80s. I think that's the time in which these balloon skirts were popular. I don't quite get these. They're just not for me. No knock if they're for you. Um, but they, these all are going to have that balloon hem. The model has on view C. So let's look at that one. Um, view C is going to be the longer length, more like a midi length. There's an extra seam near the bottom with some ties that you could give it some extra volume. You can see here that this one is more of a cargo style with cargo pockets. And then um, you have an elasticized waist with grommets and sort of like a faux tie. View B is going to be a shorter view of the same thing. So you're gonna lose the cargo pockets. There's not really any room for them. You are gonna have the elasticized waist with the faux ties as well as the um, balloon hem. View B is basically just gonna be a longer view of view A, a longer version of view A. And then like I said, view C adds this extra seam with cargo pockets and um, an extra drawstring. So this is interesting. Um, cargo, everything seems to be in. So I sort of understand view C, but like I said, I've never really understood uh, balloon skirts. They sort of remind me of hammer pants, if you remember that from the 90s. At an 80s baby, that's what it just makes me think of. So you can see here that it goes from a 6 to a 14 and then a 16 to a 24. Um, you have a lot of room in this. So as long as you can fit inside the waist measurements with the elastic, I think you'd be fine with this. The hips measurement doesn't really matter because this is so gathered. Um, and they basically call for just a lightweight woven. So you're looking at chambray, cotton blends, a lightweight twill, linen, poplin, ripstop, nylon would give it more of that like sporty feel. I think I could see that as well. This is not a yes for me because this is just not my aesthetic, but it could it could be for you. OK, finally, a pattern I like. 9955 is quite cute. Now, let's look at the line drawings first, as I just want to point out some of the differences here. So in view A, you definitely have a short length. Um, you're going to have these like inverted pleats on the front as well as on the back. And then there is like a side pocket that's um, very squared off. I like that. The pleats give it a little extra flair. I feel like that's sort of flirty and fun. I do not get view B because view B is not long enough to really be cropped. It's more like a Bermuda short, but it's also sort of too long for that. I guess maybe this is like a culotte length. Y'all let me know if that's like, what are culottes exact? Anyway, I feel like that's more like a culotte length and then view B is your full on pant. Um, I actually, I mean view C, I actually sort of like view C as a pant as well. It gives it some fullness with pleats without the pleats coming straight from the waistband. So I think that's going to be more flattering on. Um, and I just sort of like these three views. But let's go ahead and look at the pattern envelope and it on the model. Here you can see all three of them mapped out and see on her how I think it adds that little flirtiness at the bottom, like a little fullness. It's going to have a fly zipper and like a traditional waistband and a button like a jean. So I think that's cute. Again, love the fact that they did it in denim on the model. Here, this looks like a printed floral denim or a floral chambray, because I do think it would probably work for a lighter fabric. You get a little bit more movement. And then this is the the culotte co length. I guess we're going to call it the culotte length. It's um, in like a khaki, I guess, is what that's supposed to address and then here we go again in a denim. So I do think that um, this is really cute. I like the, I don't know, the, the like the fullness of the short on the bottom, I think is cute. I'll be grabbing this one because I need to be making more separates, pants especially, also tops, but I need to be making more separates in general. So I'm probably gonna grab this and I could definitely see myself making it out of denim. Um, this goes from an 8 to a 16 and then an 18 to a 26. So thank goodness I can fit in the sizes here. So that is 99.55. Here is another short slash pants pattern in 99.56. Let's look at the uh, drawings here first uh, because the, the illustrations, the line drawings are really the same sort of as these illustrations. They just have the color on them. But you can see here on the model, it looks like it's maybe like a mid rise. You're going to have an elastic waist and view C has these, um, I, 
uh, patch pockets on the side and they've played with the grain here. So view A gives you a short length. It's not super short, maybe like a six to eight inch inseam. You're gonna have the elasticized waist here. So these are just a quick pull on short and they're playing with the stripes here the waistband and this inset at the um, in inseam is going to have horizontal stripes and then they're doing vertical stripes on the main pant leg. You can see here you don't have the patch pockets because on view A there really isn't enough room. On view B they've shown you the standouts with uh, different fabrics here so again you're going to have the vertical stripes along the leg and then they have this second uh, contrasting fabric for view B on the insets on the inseam as well as the patch pockets and the waistband. And then here it's just showing you sort of the same thing but instead of playing with the lines of a fabric, it's playing with color. This is gonna be a color block. Now, I don't know that I don't like these pants. I'm just not quite convinced that I do like the pants. The insets here don't provide any extra fullness. It really is just for the decorative um, contrast in fabric. Um, it's not like Mimi D's simplicity pattern from last drop that adds a whole lot of fullness. It's not like a, God, a go day in that way. It's just more of like just an inset panel. I don't hate these because I usually really love to do a play on stripes or patterns, but I'm not sure that this is a really great standout feature to have because it's sort of subtle on the inseam, you know? So I don't know how I feel about this one 100%, but it does come from an extra small to an extra, extra large. And again, you could do this in almost any cotton. A geometric pattern or a stripe would probably be the best to play on the inset and the pockets, but you could also do like view C and do the color blocking. I really wouldn't see the point of doing this in a traditional denim or a solid color. I mean, you'd still have the line, you do have the seam lines to be interesting, but it was still all sort of meshed together. And if that's the case, you might as well just do a basic pair of pull on pants. The last set of women's pants is 9957. And this is another interesting take on pants, I guess. This one is gonna have more of a patchwork like feel. Let's look at the line drawings. View A is going to be short, so they're basically just going to be really relatively simple, basic denim shorts, belt loops, waistband, fly zip, button. The only sort of different thing here is that you're, they're fraying the bottom of the hem. I'm sure there'll be sort of like instructions on how to do that. But then View B and View C offer you like a patchwork feel, um, which I think could be interesting. I just don't know if I quite need it. I don't see it as much in view B with just the patchwork, but nothing breaking it up color wise. I do understand a little bit more if you're gonna do view C and um, the way that they have it with contrasting fabrics, that's gonna stand out a little bit more. They also add some of the frame detail to view C. So let's look at it on the model. Um, and they are going to have views B and C on because view A is pretty easy to sort of imagine. So this is gonna be view B, like I said, where you're gonna have everything in the same color. You're gonna have it in the same fabric. Now, of course, you could break this up into color blocking if you want to, but you're not gonna have the uh, fabric details laid, laid out for how much fabric you need of each contrast. Now, this is fine. I think it fits well, it looks good on the model, but I don't know if I wanna put the effort into adding all the extra seams and fabric pieces, cutting them out and stuff, for it to just all blend together again in the end. It makes much more sense to me to do something like they have here on view C with different denims or twills. I'm not sure what this is. You can see though that they added that fringe detail and although they use more like a neutral color instead of like a traditional denim or something here, you can see sort of what the patchwork is doing here. So that makes a little bit more sense to me than just doing it with all of the same color. I do like this illustration with the denim because I could definitely see the light, medium, and dark wash of denim as a thing here. It sort of reminds me of the McCall's pattern that dropped a little bit ago that had like that differentiating of denim. My thing would be is I would typically, I guess I would do it in a denim or I would have to buy white denim and try to writ dye it the colors that I wanted to because I had a hard time finding colored denims that worked well together myself but that's just me so anyway I think these are an interesting pattern I just don't know that I would go through the effort of doing all the patching if I was just going to do it in a solid virgin if I was going to buy this pattern I would definitely want to do it in different colors 
whether they were wildly different or more like analogous colors like they have here on uh, the model for View C. Not sure. I, I could see it being cute. It's just one I probably won't be grabbing. There are things I like and things I don't like about this skirt set. Let me first start with what I do like. I like the top. Let me look at it on the, well, yeah, let's look at it on the line drawing. If we look at the line drawing here, it has the detail of like the little loop. It has the necktie as well as like some spaghetti straps. And then you have all this gathering or pin tucking. Now that's what I don't like. This seems like it's going to take a lot more fabric and be a lot more work on my part to do like this sort of draping. We'll look at it a little bit closer on the model, but I do like the overall shape of the top. Now, what I don't like is the skirt and I just don't like drop waist skirts. That's just me. Um, it's just a personal preference, nothing wrong with them, but this is going to be an easy to sew skirt. It's going to pull on. It's whatever. My issue is I don't know that the two pieces really look that great together. When you see it, well, let's zoom back out. When you see it here on the model, I don't like how you have the peplum and then you have smooth and then you sort of have the gathers of the skirt. It's too much for me. I think I would rather have this, which is the traditional gathered skirt at the waist or better yet, what I would really want to do would be extend the peplum here into a skirt, making the whole thing a one piece dress. That's more or less what I would do because I really like uh, the triangle cups and the angles and stuff of the bodice. However, like I said, when you look at it back on the model here on the close up, there are a lot of like gathers that you're doing here. Um, and I'm sure this is probably simpler than I think it is, but it just seems like a step that, <laughs> that I don't want to do because sometimes I'm a lazy sewist, but I could definitely see making um, the top into a dress more so than I could see making these two pieces separately and wearing them together. Maybe I would wear them separate, um, but I really don't think I would wear them together. So they call it a pin tucked bodice. Um, and let's see, for a relatively small bodice, on the top how much well mm, actually it still doesn't require but a yard and five eighths of fabric for the top so maybe that's not as much as i think anyway this comes from an eight to a four uh, eight to a 16 and then an 18 to a 26 and this lists chambray double gauze linens silky types a soft cotton i could see a rayon chalet i could see a crepe Anything that's lightweight and would gather well, you know, nothing that's going to be too stiff if you're going to do all these pin tucks. So I think this is really cute. Um, my laziness may come into play with this particular pattern, but I like the top and I could definitely see making it a dress. Drop waist skirts just aren't for me, but if they're for you, I think this is a really cute set. Typically, I do not love unisex patterns, um, especially for pants. However, this is like a cargo pant, um, so I think it'll be fine. What I usually don't like about unisex patterns is the fact that they are going to be cut with additional ease uh, because things that are for men typically have more ease. So I typically feel like they look a little bit oversized on a woman, which if that's the style that you're going for, I think that's great. Um, but it's usually not what I'm going for. This, however, actually looks fairly tapered and I like, um, I think I like the cargo look. Let's look at the line drawings. So we're going to have two views e here. One is like a long short or a short capri. I don't know. It hits right under the knee. And then view B is more like a capri length. I don't think it's full. Hold on. Let's look back up. Okay. No view B is full. So you're going to have an elasticized waist with the drawstring and you're going to have this really interesting front yoke, um, that creates like a pocket, like a patch pocket on the front. I think that's really interesting. And then you're going to have these cargo pockets on the side of both views that are double layered. You're going to have a large pocket with two buttons for a flap. And then you're going to have a smaller pocket on top of it, which is just sort of really interesting, not practical, but visually interesting. And then both are going to have like drawstring uh, leg opening. So I think that this is interesting. It sort of gives you the look in the line drawings of like a drop waist MC hammer parachute pant. But as you can see on the models, it doesn't have that drop waist. It's still very, uh, I mean, drop crotch. It has, it still has a very fitted look there um and i think in this camo you really lose all the details but in the black version you can on the man you can see it a little bit better but 
For once, I don't actually hate these. See here they have some top stitching that really sort of helps this pop so you can see the pocket on top of the pocket as well as this um, leg seam that you have right here. So I think that this is an interesting pattern. It's not really my style, but I do sort of like a different take on a cargo pant, which is what I think this is. Let me know what you guys think about this one in the comments. I'm 50-50, I could see myself wearing it and I could also, I think I see my 90s self wearing it maybe is what I see. I don't know, it could go either way. 9960 is a men's pattern and as usual, it's pretty simple. You're just gonna have a knit tee a button up shirt, short sleeve and shorts. Uh, admittedly, I guess men just don't have a lot of options um, and this sort of puts everything in one. So if we look at it that way, this is sort of a good thing. So first up view A, it's just a basic knit t-shirt, just a pullover t-shirt to replace your Hanes or whatever basic t-shirt you wear. View B, it's just a button up shirt with short sleeves. So like a summer man's shirt. And then you have two short views, view C and view D, which are essentially the same. It's just that view C has a patch pocket with the flap and view D doesn't. Otherwise, same pattern. So let's look at it on the model. Um, he has on all three pieces, the button up shirt is sort of like an over shirt to the simple T and then the shorts that are about knee length. There's nothing wrong with this. It, it does always kill me that they want to use like a Hawaiian palm tree tropical print for the button up shirts for the summer. It just looks very Magnum PI. But anyway, um, again, nothing wrong with it. Just basic men's pattern. If you don't have this because you're new to sewing or you've just started sewing for men or you are a man yourself and you're looking for a nice basic pattern this could be it but i would assume that you already have something like this in your catalog um it does go from a men's 34 to a 42 and then a 44 to a 52 which i think is a pretty good size range for men y'all let me know um but again simple basics pattern for men Simplicity is finishing off this summer drop with some retro pattern. So first up, we have a 1970 throwback vintage re-release reproduction pattern, which is just a knit top. Let's look at the line drawings because they never actually give us real pictures for these vintage pattern re-releases. But view one and view two and well, view one and view two are essentially the same. You're going to have like sort of a modified little slight V with a tie neck. It's just whether you want to do the embellishments like you want to do view on view one or whether you want to not add the trims uh, like they have it here on view two. These both have like hem bands for sleeves. And then view three is going to have a short sleeve and then a chevron kind of v-neck thing going on which is embellished with some lace trim so again if you look on the cover we're not going to get a real person but you can sort of see the illustrations of this whether or not you know you want to add the rick rack uh for that feeling that more retro feeling on the tops or like you just wanted it to speak for itself you could do this in a solid color I can see this in a tie dye. This doesn't specify a knit. It just says a stretch knit because any knit would really work for this. Um, the problem that I always have with these retro patterns is when they bring them back and they don't give us real options. <laughs> they don't extend the pattern sizing. So this only goes from a six to a 16 and the 16 has a 38 inch bust. I'm a 44 inch bust. So I'm well outside of this. And I think many of us are, um, so yeah, I don't really see why they re-release it without adding more pattern sizing. In this case, it might be because they're claiming that each top can be made in a yard or less of 60 inch fabric because you're typically not going to find 45 inch knits. But anyway, it's saying that you can make this in a yard or less of fabrics. And maybe that's just why they're stopping at the 16 because the 16 takes like all of these take a yard. Um, so maybe that's the issue i would rather it take more than a yard but i can make it in my size but maybe that's just me thankfully on this one i don't think i'm missing out on much this is just really a basic knit top i could use another pattern to make something very similar so it is what it is 9966 is another retro pattern coming to us from the 80s <laughs> Um, I remember the 80s, so I, I can sort of vouch for this. Definitely looks like something that my older cousins would have worn. 
Um, again, this is a one yard or less of the 45 inch fabric because this is a cotton. So you can make this out of like a quilting cotton or another fabric that might only come in 45 inches. Um, you do have three options here. Let's look at the line drawing. First up, you have the wrap front sort of halter top. I think that this is super cute. I like the bias tape and how you could play with color. We'll look at that on the illustrations. Um, but view B has, I mean, sorry, they number them. View two is going to have a sweetheart neck and it's more of like a bustier uh, corset type look, although it really isn't, but it gives you sort of the illusion of that with the sweetheart neckline, all the darts for the fitted um, look, and then the buttons in the back, as well as the halter strap on the top. And then view three is gonna be like an elastic balloon top, which you could actually use 9953 to make something very similar by just adding some elastic to the bottom. So for anybody who really likes this, but like me fits outside of this pattern sizing, you could just use 9953 for at least view three. That being said, we do at least have one retro photo here that you can see on the model in view one, which is the wrap tops. I like the play on color with the um, pop of color from the bias tape, the yellow and the blue look really nice. And then here are the other two views that you can have here. My same issue applies. This only goes from a six to a 16. So you really just don't have a lot of options here but this is a reproduction of a 1980s pattern. And again, I think they're maybe trying to stay in that one yard or less of 45 inch fabric that you probably couldn't do if you extended this past the 38 inch bust. Sticking with the same theme, this is a one yard or less of 60 inch fabric, a retro chop from the 80s. Um, this one is a knit pattern, unlike the other two. So you're going to have a little bit of stretch. It only goes from a size six to a 14, which, you know, you can be a little loose with that when you have stretch. But view one and view two are essentially the same pattern. You're going to have like spaghetti straps, straight neckline. You can add a ruffle uh, like view one or a little bit of embellishments like view two. View C, I mean, view three, sorry, is very similar. It's just going to have a little bit of scoop with lace and a bow. This is like a traditional sort of cami look. This would be great for layering or wearing under something. Um, and then view four is going to have a crisscross or a wrap front, but with a, like a crossover front, but with an added uh, trim on the top of that as well. So we can see this on the pattern envelope. They use for this first one, it looks like sort of like a crushed velvet and you can see that it's just a very simple top, but a pullover, it could be paired with like some pull on shorts for a little play set, or it could be used for maybe a pajama set. I could see this being that as well. Um, again, my issue is that they only <laughs> went up to a size 14. So there's not a lot that most of us can do with this. That is a 36 inch bust. And I don't know many grown women. I'm not saying that they don't exist. Um, smaller busted people appear. I mean, y'all definitely count as well. I just feel like there's a lot of grown women who have a bust much larger than 36 inches. So this is why I just wish it was size inclusive. I have no problem with it starting with a six why can't we just go all the way up to a 26? I just, I don't understand. Um, but again, I don't feel like I'm missing out on too much of this. I'm sure I could find another cami pattern that I guess I could sort of make this look like. The last retro pattern and the last pattern from this drop period that isn't um, crafts or a costume or dog clothes or something like that um, is this retro pattern that is from the 80s and this is a short pattern and again a one yard or less pattern so I think that's the problem with the size inclusivity here it goes from a 6 to a 14 and this is the one retro pattern I'm actually sort of mad about because I would make this so we can look at the line drawings here for view one you have a pleated front short with like a slant pocket with a waistband and a fly zip i would wear these it's super cute you could wear them either cuffed or uncuffed love them um view two is very similar to view one except for instead of pleats we are going to have gathers it looks like it lacks the pockets but it's going to have an elasticized waistband in addition to a fly zip i think they're super cute 
view three here are really cute little booty shorts they remind me of like you know Jane Fonda and the girls from Three's Company and just like that sort of very fitness inspired wear that athletic inspired wear from the 80s that has the option for the side ruching or no side ruching but the little draw strings is super cute another elastic waist I would totally rock these um and then view four is a wrap front sort of pedal is that still called a like a pedal short? I don't know. But I think that it's super cute with like the wrap front and the curve um, with the tie. I love these. I would totally wear these. But again, they only go from a 6 to a 14. So if we look at the pattern envelope here, you can see that's sort of that like athletic sporty look. Then you have the fold up traditional just like cuffed short. Um you have the wrap front which i think is super cute i mean i could alter a pair of wrap pants patterns and make the same look but i feel like i shouldn't have to and then here is view two i think that has the elasticized waist with the trim although i do think you lose the pockets on that one anyway my point is it only goes from a size six to a 14 there's only five sizes and it only goes up to a 38 inch hip i am a 48 inch hip so i'm well outside of this uh size range and it sort of is disheartening um again maybe this is because they wanted to keep everything right at a yard although you know some of these take a little bit more than a yard even at a 14 i just simply don't understand why they couldn't have graded this out to a more inclusive size range i just i don't get it but I'll just figure out another way to make these kinds of shorts. It probably won't be hard to adapt another shorts pattern that does fit me to doing these things. I just think it's unfortunate that I need to, and many others who might would like this would need to, but it is what it is. Um, so yeah, those are all the summer patterns for simplicity. So I hope that you guys enjoyed my recap of the sub summer patterns for simplicity. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know which ones you plan on grabbing, which ones you're definitely passing on and all that good stuff. I think for me, I'm going to grab one of Mimi's dresses. I think that I am going to grab maybe that two piece skirt set that you can actually see here featured. Um, and I'll just make that top into the skirt like I discussed. And I definitely want the shorts of 9955, but I won't be grabbing a ton of patterns from this release, although a lot of them were super cute. Like I said, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe and please send me a super thanks if you feel so, you know, inclined would be much appreciated. Until next time, happy sewing.